Now, let's get some quick insider gossip on the speaker's race. Hot from the front is Talk Sports political correspondent, and he's a wise man, Sean Dilley. Sean, tell us. Well, I have to say that John Burko's looking the favourites at the moment. I know that uh, Margaret Beckett is two to one uh, favourites in the eyes of the bookies. But the interesting uh, aspect of this is the reason I think that is, is without naming any particular names, government whips are going round telling anybody who will, uh, who is prepared to listen, that includes Labour MPs, that includes journalists or even Conservative MPs, that Margaret Beckett's got a very good chance of being the Speaker. Now, of course, these are secret elections. It's a secret ballot, so they can't bully backbenchers into voting in particular ways. So what they're trying to do now, uh, in my humble opinion, is a bit of a media offensive, kind of uh, uh, upping her uh, more than maybe she ordinarily would be. But you've even got John Burko making, uh, making very polite conversation, to put it that way, with, uh, with Labour MPs, Labour ministers in particular. So, I mean, if I, I'm not really a betting man, but if I had to uh, put a tenor on it, I'd be saying John Burko's your man. And the, the grandees that were hitherto uh, imagined to be frontrunners, uh, the Sir George this and Sir Yeah, Humphrey he's too much. To Sir George Young, just uh, to, for, for those who don't know, he's former chair of the Public Accounts Committee, of course. Uh, very very straight-laced, very much part of the establishment, and that's why he's not really a frontrunner. And Widdicombe, uh, it's not going to happen. It's quite unseemly to see people canvassing on her behalf, just almost as so she can tick it off her box before she retires. Yeah, uh, I mean, she'd be like a bat out of hell, I must say. Uh, she is a, a quite a courageous person and so on, but she's far too cranky and eccentric to. Well, who would uh, want to drag to her take, from the back benches? To take us into yes, to take us into this modern era, and she's quitting uh, Parliament uh, at the next election anyway, which would allow presumably a Tory majority in the new house to pick a stooge of their own. Well, possibly, but then the hope would be that from here on, uh, we're, we're, if hypothetically Anne Widdicombe were to take the speakership, and I, I think, frankly, she's got no chance of that, um, then, then the thinking would be, will it be another secret ballot? So really you can't influence it. That's the theory, but of course there are various members who are favoured by... Uh, we've got a really interesting situation because, as you've said, uh, Margaret Beckett, who uh, very much a Labour minister, shadow minister during the Tory years, of course, um, is, is the favourite of Conservative MPs, where, uh, whereas John Burko, a Tory, and formerly quite a right-wing Tory as well, it has to be said, he's favoured by Labour, Labour MPs. And I have to say that I think the fact that the government whips are busily extolling the virtues of Margaret Beckett doesn't mean that she's going to be sitting in that seat shouting order, order, and uh, picking those many members who have criticised her over the years. Now just explain to the listeners uh, why whoever wins will have to be dragged to the chair. Oh, now this, this goes back back to Speaker Lentil in what, 1642, I think, approximately, if my history serves. Uh, the start of the English Civil War uh, is my area of uh, history, the, the, the area that I love. But uh, uh, many speakers throughout uh, years and years have been executed by the monarch, but in particular, uh, the face down between Charles I and Speaker Lentil in 1642 uh, led to the English Civil War when the king attempted to arrest a number of members of Parliament. But the speaker said, I've no eyes to see you or ears to hear you in this place. Well, that's fascinating historical insight and some really sharp uh, and I think on the money insider trading here with uh, Sean Dilley of TalkSport. He knows what he's talking about. We'll see what happens on Monday. Oh, it's seven.